Hello friends. I would like to start this video out by thanking everybody who subscribed recently. I know it may not seem like much, but my subscriber count recently doubled from five, one of which was my own, to 11. So I am excited about that. Uh, it might not be a thousand, like some people get excited over, but I like to celebrate the small wins. It's the tests along the way, just as much as it is graduation day. So we're getting there. But for you, I would like to share part two of bird divination. I'm going to start by walking a few things back, uh, having watched my previous video over and over again, thinking of all the things that made me cringe and getting over that and just telling you that bird divination augury is not something new. It was something that was used by the Romans and it has been used by many cultures throughout history. Um, additionally, there are books written about them, uh, um, not just birds, bird symbolism, but bird divination. And of course I own one that was completely dedicated to books by the lovely and wonderful Erin Murphy Hiscock, The Hidden Meaning of Birds. As you can see, I've got some pages marked in there. Um, this is a great book. And another book that I use is not just about birds, but about many correspondences. Llewellyn's Complete Book of Correspondences. I'm not going to flip through that. But uh, the difference between these two books is that Llewellyn's is it's like a database on paper. It is a reference book. It gives you um, charts of what that bird means, some of the influences, herbs that can um, help you draw on the energy of that bird, gemstones that may be associated with that bird, um, gods and goddesses, zodiac signs, elements, things like that, where uh, Aaron takes the time to go through and give us the associated energies, omens, folklore, the Latin name, um, as well as um, some of the physical characteristics, uh, the element associations and things like that. Um, and another thing I wanted to go into a little bit more is how I make it work for me constantly. And, and when I say constantly, it is an intentional way of uh, feeling the birds around me. And honestly, I go into a Gnostic state. And it's usually from some meditation, burning some incense, making some noises, chanting. Uh, I have rattles that I use uh, that will put me into a Gnostic state. I prefer a peaceful transition and just listening to the world around me, particularly the birds. I recently did this on uh, the day before our Thanksgiving here in the United States. I had taken the day off. I live in a small town. I went to our tea shop. I'm lucky to have a very lovely tea shop. And right next door is a brand new coffee shop. And they also have art supplies. What? So yeah, in my tiny town, we have all this stuff. And a park, a beautiful park where a river runs through it. And I have seen beavers there. There are guaranteed gonna be seagulls. But that day I saw seven blue herons. I usually see one or two, but seven. And that was a lot. And a lot of woodpeckers and blue jays and another little bird that I hadn't seen in quite a while, uh, a tufted titmouse and chickadees. So it was uh, a moment that I, I, I took despite, you know, people being around. It was a landing. There are people who were dropping boats in the water, but these are all things that constantly go on in the world around us. And I have found it in myself to be able to commune with these creatures in their element, just as they do. There are always people work, walking around. There are always things. The world goes on around us constantly, no matter what. So keeping that in mind um, it is something I take into consideration when I'm practicing. And it was almost unintentional that day, but it was last minute. How's that? Um, so moving on, uh, when I do this, some of the things that I consider is whether or not these birds are flying right to left, how many there are, 
Um, I'm going to look down because, I, I, like I said, I've got my notes and i got to squint because I can't see. Um, when something is flying to your left or uh, that's, that's generally a, a, you can get a yes or no, um, that is going to be the negative or not this way or don't do this or whatever you're thinking. Um, it's a no answer, you know, affirmative, positive, true, false, one, zero, however you want to look at it. That's, that's the now is to the left, to the right is a yes. And I generally don't see birds flying in tandem with me. Although if I do, that's pretty cool. Um, but if, if I'm looking for, if I'm looking at birds, I'm looking for things. If it's flying from left to right, for me, that means, you know, a, a, um, a, uh, a smooth transition of energy. If it's right to left, I may struggle a little bit. That's a little bit more adverse transition of energy, whatever the energy is. And we're looking at the kind of bird, what I've got going on in my life, what questions I have been asking the universe, uh, where I'm looking for guidance. Um, thinking about the number of birds. If these birds have calls, the number of those calls. Um, and the time of day. A lot of people like to think about um, the direction that birds are flying in. Generally, three birds flying in the east or three birds perched in the east is good luck. But for me, personally, this girl specifically, three crows flying east is bad news bears. And I don't even want to talk about what happened the last time that I saw three crows flying east. I was like, oh, three crows. I was like, oh, wait a second, they're flying east. Remember the last time it happened? I was like, oh, yeah. Uh, it's over now, but it, it's, you know, no harm, no foul. No one died. No one was hurt. Um, in fact, you know, everyone's safety was accounted for. So uh, when good things, only only good things came of it. Um, so looking at what these birds are doing, basically, you want to pay a lot of attention. Um, you know, are they, are they gathering nest materials? Are they um, hunting? Are they uh, calling for a mate? You know, it, that also can depend on the time of the year. Um, but really, it is, is that bird where it's supposed to be? I have seen, I call them oscondias, things that aren't where they're supposed to be. Um, I found a night jar in a parking lot. I found a snipe they're actual birds called snipes this is not me sending someone out in the backyard at night you know with two wooden sticks and saying here's snipe 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 because we did that and i had that happen to me but it was funny i don't know i grew up in the boonies we didn't have a whole lot to to keep us entertained except for ourselves so but come to find out that there really is a bird called a snipe it's referred to as a snipe it's also known as a woodcock um not to be confused with the uh, the movie um but this this particular bird was not where it was supposed to be. I was in a highly uh, densely populated urban area on my lunch break, walking down a street that was under construction. The sidewalks were ripped up and this bird had flown into the window of a building. It was one of those situations where it thought that it was flying through maybe like a parking garage or that there wasn't a window there at all, but there certainly was. And this poor bird flew headlong into this window. And I ended up taking it to a nature center where it, uh, after a few days, it did recover and it was released back into the wild, um, <laughs> very aggressively back into the wild. It wanted to go because that's the nature of these birds. Um, but they're pretty great birds. They kind of dance around. They're the ones that dance around to uh, the tequila song on uh, the, the internet. But um, another really good story I have about what the bird is doing and is it where it's supposed to be, a uh, few uh, maybe about a month or so ago, I uh, right after I had released uh, the, the original part one of Bird Divination, I had an encounter with a hummingbird. I love telling this story. I was headed to the dentist that day and, wow, well, kind of getting the vapors. Um, have a lifelong fear of the dentist, rather had a lifelong fear of the dentist and was had taken the day off, was gonna go. I had to get some, some pretty extensive dental work done and was filling our hummingbird feeders. And we had this one, she was just a little miss curious. And we have a, uh, uh, you can see where my previous videos um, are filmed under a pergola and we put the uh, bug net up 
so that we can sit out there at night. Sometimes we'll sleep out there, but uh, I usually keep them drawn back, but we have a, uh, a shade um, canopy over it and that was pulled back and this little miss was just investigating and I turned to fill one of the hummingbird feeders and I turned back and she was gone and I didn't hear her zoom off and I I did hear uh, her kind of up under that canopy and oh my goodness she was stuck and so I'm like oh my goodness you know it was it was a very frantic and it probably took a whole part of 30 seconds to kind of peel that canopy back and it which it's it's designed to do but without her getting into the little loops that it creates so kind of pulling that back and trying to coax her out I don't want to touch her I don't want to scare her um but then she got up under the net she kept trying to push through the net so I was I was doing the the you know trying to to scoop her through this and and at some point she dropped into my hand and flattened herself out and just lit up it, it was the most magical thing that had ever happened to me and she started making this noise beep, beep, which is their distress call it was it was I think I was just as distressed as she was but um it, it was her defense mechanism, I think, and, and her little bird self. She 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 knew that I wasn't going to hurt her, but she was still very scared, and I was scared for her. I didn't want to hurt her. I knew how much bigger I was than she was and how terrifying that must have been for her. So, um, you know, the canopy had been drawn back. The sides of the curtains were open, so I really just stuck my hand out and off she went um, and was thinking about that after it had happened, and I'm like, you know what? I just caught a hummingbird. Why am I scared of a dentist? I could do anything. I caught a hummingbird. I caught a hummingbird, y'all. That happened to me about a month ago. So that's that's my hummingbird story. Um, another thing is where I work. I, uh, I work in safety. And one of the happiest moments I've ever had in my life was when a duckling probably less than a day old, had gotten into one of our giant industrial machines, very much not where she was supposed to be. I believe she was using her little internal um, heat sinkers and find, trying to find the warmest place. And we have done some heat surveys and these were definitely uh, purported to be one of the warmest places that we have. So thank goodness for emergency stops, but I was delivered I'm always getting critters. I, I say it's critter season every April. <laughs> but I was delivered this tiny little duckling. And it was 2020, which we all know what was going on. And it was June of 2020. Actually, yeah, late June of 2020. All of the wildlife centers were closed. No one was taking in uh, anything. And um, at the closest place I could have taken her was two hours away. And I, I just wasn't sure how a duckling would survive a two hour drive. So I messaged my husband with this adorable photo of uh, of this duckling. Hey, look what we found at work today. Can we keep her? And he actually said yes. So I brought her home and we had every intention of letting her determine what she wanted to do with her life, but ultimately raising her to still continue to be a wild duck as much as we could in our little condo. Uh, my daughter had just moved out and we eventually converted her room into uh, the uh, Amelia's room. That's what we ended up naming her. For the longest time, I'll probably call her Baby Duck, um, but that was that was her nickname, Baby Duck. Um, we raised a duck and this was at a time where I was going through a lot. Like I said, I'm in safety. Nobody wants to be the safety lady in that kind of situation. I was learning how to deal with it. And she taught me so many things about using your senses, being intuitive, letting things come naturally. There were so many things that she just knew. I would have never been able to teach her how to swim, how to catch spiders, how to stand on one leg to conserve body heat. I don't know these things. I thought there was something wrong with her. But no, I th thank goodness for the internet because I was able to look all those things up and uh, about maybe about a hundred days later. I haven't actually counted the number of days from the day we found her to the day she flew. Um, but she is definitely out there being a wild duck somewhere. We live next to a marina. Like I said, we live next to a river on the Great Lakes. Um, 
and we went a couple weeks later and I did my little baby duck call. That was, that was the voice that I talked to her in. And she came swimming to us and I decided to stop there because I didn't want her to break that wild uh, streak that she had gotten back into her nature. Not wild, it wasn't wild for her, that was her nature. I wanted her to stay in her element. And, um, and now I love all ducks. <laughs> so is that bird divination? Maybe not, but did that particular bird bring us messages? Yeah, that particular bird changed my life. It also changed my husband's life too. Um, and you can actually see that on my Instagram, Peckish Pagan, uh, where I've got a few pictures of her as a duckling. And yeah, for me, I, I, I get it. I can't ever eat or prepare duck again. So maybe someday I'll get like that about other animals, but um, I, I do try to ethically source them. I, I use a local butcher. He uses uh, no nitrates, no antibiotics in any of his meats, and uh, that works for me. Um, so moving on, making some other points. Um, generally, you're going to look at how a bird makes you feel in that moment. If for no other reason than the placebo effect, you can decide something, but you have to have that trigger to engage that placebo effect. If you, if you know that eagles mean, yeah, there's a positive change in your energy and things are coming to you no matter what, you know, that's, that's the energy of an eagle that I get from an eagle. Um, good. Do it. Run with that. If that's what you need to, to get to where you're going, do it. Um, if you see three crows flying in the east and then you hit the lotto, that's what it means for you. Uh, the, the thing that I stick to with this, which, you know, from what I understand is, is the chaos of magic, uh, rather chaos magic, literally, um, what produces consistent results? And very much like some of our prescription medications, if, if it no longer continues to produce consistent results, then consider what are the results it is producing, if any at all. Um, and, and speaking on that, if, if it does transition, don't consider that it might not transition back. You know, you may lose something and you pick up on it again, like golfing or riding a bike. It's something that comes and goes. There's an ebb and a flow to everything in our life, and including um, the magic and the energy that we bring into it. Um, that's it. I had the, the, the hummingbird story, the duck story. I wish this was a better crescendo for the end of this video, but that is, uh, that is what we've got for bird divination. Like I said, I highly recommend The Hidden Meaning of Birds by Erin Murphy Hiscock. She does a very good job of describing um, meditative states, how to um, find your bird guides, how birds can bring meaning into your life. And it's a really good starting point. Uh, ultimately, this, much like every other tool that you use, is something that comes with time and knowledge and experience. So reading, um, there are lots of videos. I highly recommend uh, Magical Crafting. She has some really good spirit guide videos. And for those, that's, that's not just birds. She does a lot of different animals, but some of her, her, uh, bird references are spot on. And I will also be listing um, some links down below that I refer to frequently, my, my go-tos when I am not entirely sure what something means. But by all means, do a, a freeform guidance, uh, freeform research, uh, whatever works for you, however you want to, check books out of the library, go on what you know, how does it make you feel ultimately is where you want to start. What is it? Look at the color of the bird. Um, look at the time of day, the time of the year. They're cyclical. I'm not going to see generally um, white throated sparrows this time of year, but if I hear one, that, I'm going to consider that. Robins, we see those all year long, but if they're diving at my head, that either means that there's a nest somewhere or 
I, I need to pay attention to where I'm going. So that's all I've got for divination. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. And uh, maybe, maybe my next video will actually be about food. That's what this whole channel was supposed to be about. And uh, Tim, if you're one of my new subscribers, I promise that video is going to be for you. Take it. Take <laughs> I got this whole way. Take care. Do good. Be well.